welcome back! In the last video, I showed you how to paint a daisy in the traditional Russian Rostova style. In this video, I'd like to show you how to paint a chrysanthemum, which is looks a bit like this. Uh, it's done in a very similar way as a daisy. I showed you how to get to this stage in my previous videos, so if you haven't seen them, have a look. Um, and for this, you will need your main color. So chrysanthemums come in different colors, so decide which color you'd like to use. I'll be using my red color as my main color. And the technique is very similar. Uh, we work from dark to light. And um, normally the highlight is at the front of the flower, so the part of the flower that's close to the viewer. So you need to decide where you want your highlights before you begin painting and you'll need to decide on the shadow color as well. Um, so let me just begin to load my palette. You will need your blending gel, like we did for the, for the daisy. So I'll just squeeze a little bit onto my palette. Okay, remember you only need enough blending gel to cover the flower you're working on. Uh, I will be using my red as my main color. So this is a Nepthol Crimson. Squeeze a little bit onto my palette. Okay, and for my shadow color, I will be using my Payne's Gray. Now, if you don't have any other um, shades of the main color, just add a little bit of the shadow color to the main color to create the darker shades, and a little bit of your highlight color, which I'll be using yellow, to create the highlights. But I happen to have this purple matter, which is a dark red, and I'll be using that instead. So let me squeeze a little bit onto the palette. And of course you'll need your highlight color. You can use white or yellow. I'll be using yellow for this flower, so I'll add a bit on. Okay. Alright, and now that I have loaded my palette, we're ready to begin painting. First thing we do is we need to cover the area where the flower is with our gel medium because this will allow us to mimic uh, the effect of oil color that is traditionally used for this style of painting. So all I do is get a clean brush, a white brush, cover it in gel medium and apply it over the whole area of the flower on which you'll be working. All right, so. Like this. Okay, and now we're ready to begin adding color. Okay, so we will start with the darkest shadow color. In this case, it's the uh, paints gray. So coat your brush in the shadow color. Okay. And on my flower, the shadow is right at the back of the flower. So I will cover the whole back section of the flower in the shadow color. And apply the shadow color across the whole back of the flower. Like this. At this point it's important to work fast because your paint will you don't want your paint to dry. I have applied my shadow color, now I go to the next lightest color, which is dark red that I'm using, and I will begin to outline each of the petals. I always start in the center and work my way outwards, alternating which side I'm doing. For example, one, 
two, three, four, like this. And it's important not to wash your brush because this way the brush will get dirty and give you a gradual transition from light to dark. So you can see I might leave the back undone. Okay, and now I do the reaching petals on the bottom. I might use a smaller brush for that. Okay, again the same dark red. Uh, and also work from the middle outwards. Okay. Now that I've done this layer, I go to the slightly brighter color, which is my, uh, which is my uh, Nephthal Crimson, and I paint that over the top of the darker color. And each stroke is slightly smaller than the darker color. So this gives the impression of lots of leaves. If you wanted to, you could also add uh, some shadow at the base here at the same stage when you're adding it towards at the back because that would create more contrast okay. and the same on the bottom All of your uh, petals should be pointing towards the center of the flower. With each consecutive layer, you can leave more petals unpainted towards the back, because this creates a gradual transition from light to dark towards the end of the, the back of the flower. Okay, now I go to my crimson naphthal, naphthal crimson, sorry, with a little bit of yellow added to it. Okay, that creates like a brighter red color. And again, in exactly the same way, work from the center towards the back without washing or reloading your brush. Remember to not bring your reaching petals right up uh, to touch the center petals here. You want to leave a little bit of black just around this area for contrast. Okay. And now I'm going to add my highlight layer, which is a very light orange. I have mixed a little bit of naphthal crimson with some yellow. And this is my first highlight layer. Remember the highlights are normally towards the front of the flower. Okay, you don't want as all the uh, petals highlighted, you just want the center ones highlighted. And now for my final layer, I'm going to make just completely yellow. Just pure light yellow for my final highlight. And to the center, oops, a little bit too much water, I'll just take some off. Yep, so dab, if you have this happen to you and there's too much water, dab your brush on your paper towel to absorb all the water and then touch it back to the surface and all the liquid will be absorbed back into your brush. So let me try that one again. First highlight one. Okay. 
And now for the bottom petals. Now normally I would be turning my work, which would make it more comfortable to draw all the different petals leaning in different directions. Like you can see this is a little bit more difficult, so I would normally turn the whole surface. But because of the camera, I can't do that now. Okay. And now if you think it needs even more contrast, and remember in this type of painting, the more contrast the better, you could even add a little bit more white. I mean yellow, sorry. And sometimes you can mix a bit of white and your yellow as well. Better. Okay, and a bit more on the bottom. Okay, now the next step is for wait to wait for everything to dry. And then we're ready to do the center of the chrysanthemum. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and my flower is a lot more drier. It's almost dry. And at this stage we can do the center. Uh, now for the center you will need red, yellow and a little bit of white if you want. And you will need your very thin liner brush. So the first thing you do is add red paint to your liner and begin making little dots in the center of the chrysanthemum. Oops, a bit more red. Okay. And we make them in the shape of a circle with the majority of the dots uh, being towards the bottom. So at the top we just have very light dots and bigger and more dots towards the front of the flower. Okay. Okay, now we clean the brush and grab a little bit of yellow onto our brush. And do the same, but with less dots of yellow and more towards the top, like this. Okay. Maybe a little bit here. Okay. Then you clean your brush again and get a little bit of white onto the tip. And you only want a few highlights of the white, also to towards the top. Okay. And now for the center, we get a little bit of red again. Onto our brush. And do a little line here. A little circle maybe. And when that's dry, when this is dry, you add a little, or even I could show you now maybe. Add a little yellow dot here. Like this. And now you're done. And this is how to paint a chrysanthemum. You could try using different colors and different highlight colors. But remember the main uh, attra attraction of this style of painting is contrast. So the more contrast you have between the light and shadow, the be more beautiful your flower will look. So thank you for watching this video and join me next time when I show you how to paint a rose.